Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam Namas Kritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tatojamu Dirayat before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should first offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of God in Narayan, unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Sarasvati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prays for Bhadreshu, Nicham Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavat Yutama Shloke, Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki. We're studying Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 9, entitled Answers by Citing the Lord's Version. We're on text 22, text 22, Chapter 9, Canto 2. Manishita Anubhava Anubhava Ayam Ayam Mama Mama Loka Avalokanam Avalokanam Yat Yat Pashutya Pashutya Rahasi Rahasi Rakarta Kata Paramam Paramam Abba 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 Ashititanu bhavo yam. Manishitanu bhavo yam. Mama loka valoka nam. Mama loka valoka nam. Yadupa shrutya rahasi. Yadupa shrutya rahasi. Akarta paramam tapa. Akarta paramam tapa. Nishitanu babo yam. Nishitanu babo yam. Maloka maloka nam. Maloka maloka nam. Yadu pashutya rahasi. Yadu pashutya rahasi. Akarta paramam tapa. Akarta paramam tapa. Nishitanu babo yam. Nishitanu babo yam. Amaloka baloka nam. Amaloka baloka nam. Yadu pashu charahasi. Yadu pashu charahasi. Ekarta paramam tapa. Ekarta paramam tapa. Manishita nu babo yam. Manishita nu babo yam. Mama loka valoka nam. Mama loka valoka nam. Yadu pashu tiarahasi. Yadu pashu tiarahasi. Shakar tapara mam tapaha. Shakar tapara mam tapaha. Manishita nu babo yam. Manishita nu babo yam. Mama loka valoka nam. Mama loka valoka nam. Ya upashutya rahasi. Ya upashutya rahasi. Shakar tapara mam tapaha. Shakar tapara mam tapaha. Would anyone else like to recite the verse? <laughs> Just, just so we're aware, the verse is uh, Canto 2, Chapter 9, Text 22, Srimad Bhagavatam. Manishita. Oh. Ingenuity. 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 Anubhava. Anubhava. Perception. 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 I am. I am. This. This. Mama. 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 My. My. Loka. Loka. Abode. Abode. 
Avalokanam. Avalokanam. Seeing by actual experience. Seeing by actual experience. experience. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Because. Upashucha. Upashucha. Hearing. Hearing. Rahasi. Rahasi. Great penance. In great, great penance. penance. Jakarta. Jakarta. Having performed. Having performed. Paramam. Paramam. Highest. Highest. Tapa. Tapa. Penance. 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 Translation. The highest perfectional ingenuity is the personal perception of my abodes. And this has been possible because of your submissive attitude in the performance of severe penance according to my order. So purport by Srila Prabhupada. The highest perfectional stage of life is to know the Lord by actual perception, by the grace of the Lord. This can be attained by everyone who is willing to discharge the act of devotional service to the Lord as enjoined in the revealed scriptures that are standard and accepted by the bona fide Acharya spiritual masters. For example, the Bhagavad Gita is the approved Vedic literature accepted by all the great Acharyas, such as Shankara, Ramanuja, Madhva, Chaitanya, Vishwanath, Baladev, Siddhanta Sarasvati, and many others. In that Bhagavad Gita, the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, asks that one always be mindful of him, always be his devotee, always worship him only, and always bow down before the Lord. And by doing so, one is sure to go back home, back to Godhead, without any doubt. In other places also, the same order is there, that one give up all other engagements and fully surrender unto the Lord without hesitation. And the Lord will give such a devotee all protection. These are the secrets of attaining the highest perfectional stage. Lord Brahma exactly followed these principles without any superiority complex. And thus he attained the highest perfectional stage of experiencing the abode of the Lord and the Lord himself with all his paraphernalia impersonal realization of the effulgence of the Lord's body is not the highest perfectional stage, nor is the stage of paramatma realization. The word manishita is significant. Everyone is falsely or factually proud of his so-called learning. But the Lord says that the highest perfectional stage of learning is to know him in his abode, devoid of all illusion. Mm -hmm. Om Ganatimi Randasya Gnanjana Shalakaya Chakshur and Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Upakadamayam Dadati Svapadanti Kam Bande Ham Shri Guru Shri Tapadakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishnavam Stra Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Saganaragnatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Vedan Sagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitam Stra He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Tagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kancha Nagaranga Radhe Vrindavane Sphere Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Banchakalpata yubhyascha, kripa sindhu bhyevacha, patitanan, pavanebhyo, vaisnavebhyo, namo namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Hapabhu Nichananda, Sri Advaita Gadadar, Sri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gwabani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachya Desha Tarine Jai Srila Prabhupada 
Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 9, Text 22. Manushitanu bhavo yam mamaloka balokanam yadupashu jarahasi takarta paramam tapa. The highest perfectional ingenuity is the personal perception of my abodes. And this has been possible because of your submissive attitude in the performance of severe penance according to my order. So this is Vishnu Krishna speaking to Lord Brahma. We can note very colorful language, the highest perfectional ingenuity. Later in the purport, Prabhupada talks about Lord Brahma exactly followed these principles without any superiority complex. And thus he attained the highest perfectional stage of experiencing the abode of the Lord and the Lord himself with all this paraphernalia. So it's definitely one thing that strikes me in reading this translation and purport is Prabhupada's just fully natural, no, no, nothing contrived or no presumption, just fully natural conviction from experience. Um, so Prabhupada writes that the highest perfectional stage of life is to know the Lord by actual perception, by the grace of the Lord. And then Prabhupada says, this can be attained by everyone who is willing to discharge the act of devotional service to the Lord as enjoined in the revealed scriptures that are standard and accepted by the bona fide acharyas, spiritual masters. So Prabhupada, without any doubt or any thought of doubt, just yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, you can, you can achieve what Rama is achieving, a direct experience of Krishna and the abodes in Vaikuntha and Goloka Vrindavan. Just, yeah, this, this can be attained by everyone. Like you speak like me? Yeah. So, um, yes. And Prabhupada later says, yes, and by, uh, by following the acharyas, following the prampara, one is sure to go back home, back to God, back to Godhead without any doubt. So just, um, we can miss that. Just like, yeah, the Prabhupada, he's Bhaktivedanta. I mean, he's the, this amazing scholar, the greatest Vedic scholar of the modern age. And then the Bhakti, so it's not just scholarship that uh, Prabhupada's words have potency because of, of that uh, full realization, because of his full realization and just, uh, conviction, nothing contrived, just Prabhupada's there with Brahma, with Vishnu. And like, and he's, and he's, he's telling us, yes, that, uh, uh, yeah, oh yeah, and you can, you can do this too. You can do this too. And he's giving a process, so, okay. That uh, strikes me very clearly. And, and so Brahma, in this section of Bhagavatam, well, all 18,000 verses of Bhagavatam are completely transcendental. This section has some special, special importance. And um, so Brahma is having direct experience of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his, his abode and his paraphernalia and the, and, and, and the uh, the airplanes there and, and everything. And that's all described here. Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita, Raj, Raj, <coughs> Rajaguya, Rajavijam, <coughs> Haritram, Inamutamam, Pachakav, Shavakamam, Dharmyam, Shushukam, Kartum, Avyayam. So Krishna says, this is the topmost knowledge. And that's where Prabhupada emphasizes here. Uh, the Lord says that the highest perfectional stage of learning is to know him in his abode devoid of all illusion. So Krishna says, this is the, this Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, this is the topmost knowledge, this most confidential knowledge, because it, do, it gives direct perception. It's not just abstract, not just theoretical, it gives direct perception of the self by its, by its in, in experiencing your experience, direct perception. And so here Brahma with his spirit, through his austerity, his spiritual senses are fully awakened, fully enlivened, spiritual senses fully attuned and with spiritual eyes and spiritual ears and spiritual sense of fragrance and taste and touch 
spiritual mind, Brahma is having a direct experience of himself as spirit, spirit soul, and of uh, Vishnu and um, Lord Krishna's abodes. Mm. And so, so through his devotion, yeah, just like, like in wood, in wood, fi fire is contained everywhere within wood and through friction, the fire is manifest. So similarly, this reality, uh, Krishna, the Supreme Lord is everywhere and antarasta pramana chantarasta. And we might say in the analogy that the friction is the devotion and through humble, humble devotional service, then Krishna is manifest to us just as fire becomes manifest from wood with friction. And so here, and also this is striking me. So like, as we like to say that, so Srimad Bhagavatam, it's revealing truth. Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, it's revealing truth. And each word is identical to the truth that it reveals. That's what makes it, this isn't just, I'm reading a book. No, we're having, actually in the, in the Vedic age, the different schools of thought are called darshan. Darshan means like we have, let, let, we, we have a darshan with a spiritual master. And darshan means to see, to realize. There's a word, maybe some of you know from, from a book from decades ago to, to grok. It's not just seeing with the eyes, but it means to have an experience, a deep, a, 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 a deep realization. And, and so we're associating with Brahma, we're associating with Srila Prabhupada here. And, and the more we associate with these person, these transcendentally realized personalities, then the more our conviction is deepened. And the more we associate with, uh, with persons who have other interests and other values other than the Vaikuntha program, then the more we're going to be alienated and we're gonna be filled with doubts. Now, when I say associate, so associate doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, I spent time here or there. Associate means who are we intimately allowing into our psyche, into our consciousness, okay? Even like we could go to the internet and read an article and we can read it with like, like really a consciousness of, okay, how can I use what I'm reading here to increase my service in bhakti yoga, to increase my service to Prabhupada's mission? And then the experience of that article for 10 minutes, it deepens our conviction. It deepens our trust in this process of bhakti yoga, or we can associate with uh, a song we hear on the radio or an article on the internet in such a way where, where we're being influenced by the consciousness there. And then we become uh, dragged down and entang entangled. Thank you, glad you like. Yeah, so association, it's not, or at, at the same, yeah, we could, we could be associating with sincere devotees, but our mind is absorbed in all sorts of nonsense, even though physically we might even be in the same room with sincere devotees, but we're not getting the association. So, um, so this association principle and, and so, yeah, so, so Brahma's devotion. So Prabhupada uses the term without any superiority complex. So as this part of the Bhagavatam goes on, as we read the verses, we're gonna hear more and more about how Brahma is free from any arrogance or superiority complex that becomes, that's just, Really, like uh, it's it's a very Freudian term, right? The superiority complex of the Prabhupada uses it here. It's very striking. So now, okay. So now, um, 
so like okay like like if i'm doing something that like i i deem like well that was pretty good that was devotional service so i'm quick to grab on to superiority complex i did it i did it like that so brahma he really has a lot to feel superior about i mean if we just think of our tiny worlds you know we have our tiny worlds you know and like i did this and i looked with that i achieved that and I, I managed to uh, to get up a little early today, I, you know, like that. I completed my 60. So Brahma, he's like really doing big service. He's really doing big service. Brahma means he's the first Brahman. He's, he's the first Brahmana in the universe. He's filled. He is the source of the Vedas. Of course, Vedeshta, Savarahame, Vedu, Vedanta, Krit, Veda, Eva, Jam. Of course, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is the source of the Vedas. And then we get the Vedas in this universe through our parampara and through other, other paramparas also. We get the Vedas, we get all this knowledge in this universe through Brahma. And so Krishna does that through Brahma. You know, he plays his flute and Brahma. Um, yes, I'm just gonna, interesting. To, maybe you can handle more. Yeah, okay, he has four heads. Yeah, and okay, you probably are aware of the story. So, uh, so Brahma with four heads in our universe, he went to visit Krishna in Dvarka. This is, a, this is a Krishna book. And he was there with the Krishna secretary or, or doorman. And, uh, and um, Krishna asked him to, uh, to, 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 through the doorman or the secretary to, to wait. And then, um, um, so uh, Brahma waits and then, uh, and then apparently, so, so, so then Brahma hears that Krishna was meeting with other Brahmas. Oh, other Brahmas? And then, and then, and then Brahmas from all different universes. And the, like our universe is the smallest, actually. Our Brahma has four heads. There are other Brahmas with like a hundred heads, a thousand, a trillion, a hundred trillion heads. This is all described. So our Brahma has four heads. So he's capable of more. That's true. He has more like brain power. True. And he's, he's a puny Brahma. I mean, no, no insult to Brahma, but he's, he's a puny Brahma compared to other Brahmas from other universes, just to get some perspective. So Brahma, yeah, he's doing like so, so much. With, and, and we're gonna hear as we read on in a few verses that Brahma, here he has direct audience with Krishna. And he's, we're gonna hear him pray related to Prabhupada's without any superiority complex statement. We're gonna hear Brahma play, please, Krishna, please let me do my service without becoming proud. So that's, that's Brahma's mentality. That's Brahma's mentality. Let me do my service without becoming proud, arrogant, obnoxious. So this, we can really follow, you know, this, this we can aspire, we can aspire to that. <clears throat> and, uh, we kind of talked about this somewhat yesterday um, at the uh, Prabhupada House and Melrose program. There was some discussion with Stephanie Voigt asked some question there and yeah. And it was like, uh, cause the idea is like, yeah, we, we do something, maybe we do something devotional. We, did a, we do a little austerity and we're feeling some sense of liberation, some joy from that. And then due to pride, we become become complacent or due to pride, we can maybe start becoming harsh with others rather than humble and gentle like that. And so Brahma, yeah, he's creating the whole universe. And let's keep in mind, creating the whole universe, well, it's, it's, a, it's a big service, but it's material. No, the purpose of the whole prison house, the purpose of the whole Dorga, the purpose of the whole universe, the whole material universe. And it, it's, Good to keep track of, good to keep sight of this. The purpose is to support us, to support us um, to, um, to, to regain our original consciousness. Go back home, back to Godhead in a geographical sense. More, more importantly, really, in terms of consciousness, in terms of consciousness. And so, and so this humility that Brahma is showing, because now just humility. So good, yeah. So so we don't want to get a superiority complex. Uh, okay. So let's have an in, inferiority complex. No, we're not. We're not encouraged to have an inferiority complex either. And 
so because as we often emphasize, as Prabhupada often emphasizes, this true, true humility. First of all, true humility, it's very foundational that arises again. And it's very foundational to be steady in devotional service. Even if we look at this process, devotional service. And so, so it's very important, right? That it means like, I'm serving someone else. And to do that enthusiastically and cheerfully, I need to be humble. Material consciousness, like I might serve, I might serve the boss, but one day I'm going to be the boss or I'll like that, like that. But here it's just, no, I'm, I'm an eternal servant. I'm never the master. So that, that in itself requires humility. And this devotional service, the process itself is transcendental. And that's, we might, oh, well, yeah, obviously. But other processes are not transcendental. Other processes, they're bona fide and they're material and they're designed to lead to transcendence. Just like, say, jnana yoga. Okay, I use my material intelligence to understand that I'm not the body and it's helpful, it has its place. And it's designed to lead to bhakti. Bhakti itself, it, the process itself is transcendental to the material universes, to the, to the Mahatattva or Varnashram. You know, I'll, I'll use my psychophysical nature, right, to, uh, to contribute to society and gradually make spiritual advancement. It's very, it's a Vedic process, but it's founded in matter, my, psych, my material psychophysical nature, my intelligence or the Astanga yoga, different yoga processes, my power to do austerity. Right? It's about my power to do austerity. Okay, so again, it's, it's based in, in matter. So bhakti, the process itself is founded in transcendence. So we're from wherever we're at in the modes of nature, we just touch on bhakti and we're experiencing transcendence. So bhakti, it's founded in transcendence and it's complete Meaning that this bhakti yoga, it includes, it includes the, the benefits, the qualities of the other processes. Vasudevi Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga Priyujita, Janayat Yeshu Vairagyam, Gyanam Chayadahitukam. That we engage in bhakti and automatically we get knowledge, the knowledge that the, the jnana yogis seek automatically one gets detachment, the detachment that the austere meditators seek. So it's all included in that transcendental complete process of bhakti, purna, complete. And Lord Chaitanya emphasizes, that um, that if we want to be steady, then this humility, if we want to be steady in devotional service, then humility is, is vital. And he defines it as that we're feeling ourselves lower than the straw on the street. We're being more tolerant than a tree, right? I remember from decades ago, the, a book, The Giving Tree, the tree is the emblem of tolerance and we're ready to offer all respects to others. Every, every living entity is a spirit soul. All in a spirit soul and sitting right next to them in the region of the heart is the Paramatma super soul. We're ready to offer all respects to others and wanting, demanding no respect for myself. So that's, it's a very elevated stage. Could be easy to say. Even like in Bhagavad Gita, like right, there's a section where Krishna describes the transcendental soul. And he goes, such a transcendental soul sees gold and pebbles as the same. Okay, I mean, no, no, I, I want gold. Who cares about pebbles? No, it sees gold and pebbles as the same. Of course, if gold will support me in my service, I'll accept gold. This is the devotional mentality. But then Krishna goes on. He goes, and even more elevated is to be, to be equal in honor and dishonor. So, like, like materially, externally, oh, pebbles, gold, yes, they're all like heat, cold, okay. 
what Christian says more advanced is on that subtle platform that to be uh, to be equally accepting and not disturbed by oh I'm being honored oh I'm being insulted and I, I just continue with devotional service and that requires more advancement and to the extent that I lack that humility then I'm going to get off track I'm going to be disturbed and distracted by steadily doing, performing, engaging in um, bhakti yoga, because I got, I got some other agenda. I need, I need some respect that I'm not getting. I need some feeling of adoration or specialness, or I need to, I need to make money or whatever it is. Mm. Mm. So, Yamana Moha, Jita Sangha Dosha, all over the scriptures, Bhagavad Gita, Nirmana, pridelessness, humility. This is the foundational quality uh, uh, to, uh, to return uh, to back home, back to Godhead for liberation from the material world in an enduring way. Um, in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes 19, 19 steps or elements on the process of knowledge. And the first one is humility humility so so humility doesn't mean inferiority complex okay in one sense superiority complex and inferiority complex they're both founded in arrogance because i use both of them i'm so fallen i'm worse i'm the lowest i use both of them i'm inferior i'm superior to avoid giving myself with full enthusiasm to serve Prabhupada's mission, because it's all, it's all about me. I am feeling this, I'm feeling that. So, so genuine humility, it can, it, sometimes the expression of genuine humility by the pure saintly Vaishnavas can look like an inferiority complex, but it's not a grungy, it's not a grungy game. It's not a grungy game. So, uh, um, when Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami describes himself as lower, feeling lower than the worm in stool, lower than Jagai Madai, when Srila Prabhupada, writing his poems on the Jaladutin, the, uh, coming to Boston Harbor, he writes, I have no knowledge and no devotion. So it's not like, not like look how humble I am. Like he's really feeling that. I have no knowledge, no devotion. And he says, and, and, and he says, and all I have, all I have is trust in your names, Krishna, and trust in the mission of my spiritual master, Bhakti Stanta Sarasvati. So if you want to use me as, as an instrument, make me dance, make me dance, make me dance. So these are genuine feelings and expressions of spiritual humility that move one to greater determination to serve the mission of the head of our Parampara, Lord Brahma, and his representatives, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati, Srila Prabhupada. That's, that's the test. It's really the test of any emotion. Is it grungy or healthy? We can talk about a, like toxic materially or healthy materially. Um, but in, in terms of spiritual life, Genuine spiritual life is very personal, filled with uh, filled with all emotions in their in, in 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 their vibrant form. And so, whether whether it's spiritual material is like is 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 this sadness moving me to deeper inspiration to engage in bhakti yoga? If so, then it's spiritual sadness. It's spiritual guilt. It's spiritual happiness. We were talking yesterday at the Prabhupada House program. That's like, maybe even I have some apparent devotional accomplishment. I like that, but then I become elated. And then that elation disturbs me, distracts me. Or something didn't go the way I wanted materially or spiritually, and I become discouraged. So it's, it's material because I'm, I, I, it's sapping my, sapping my inspiration for devotional service. Mm. Okay. 
Right. I'll, uh, I'll read the verse again. Text 22, chapter 9. Anishitanu babo yam amaloka balokanam yaru pashru charahasi chakarta paramam tapa. The highest perfectional ingenuity is the personal perception of my abodes. And this has been possible because of your submissive attitude in the performance of severe penance according to my order. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thanks for your attention to Srimad Bhagavatam. I welcome any questions or comments. Damayanti. Um, well, can we talk about the severe penance part sure. of the verse? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We can use it. Share more. Uh, you, you, you want me to come in on the severe penance part? Yes. That's really, okay, it's a, like, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't mention that so much. Okay. So, yeah, so Brahma did severe penance. You know, he heard tapa like that. And so, so I'm, okay, thanks for asking about that. Because like we talked about humility. We talked about elation. We talked about guilt. And so they can all be material or spiritual. So same for austerity, same for penance. So um, actually, I, I don't have a clear distinction between penance and austerity. I kind of use them synonymously. Maybe if we study closely, Prabhupada, he uses them a little different. I'm not sure. But anyhow, so, okay. So Brah Brahma's penance, yeah, so he, like that. And, okay, so, so, so the word uh, penance, yeah, it's not like it's not like a very touchy feely word. Penance, austerity has has this harsh context. So Brahma's penance is is devotional. So it, so his his austerity means giving up any sense of material sense gratification for for enhancing his connection with super soul. His en enhancing his connection, his loving devotional connection with Krishna in the heart. So that's, that's devotional, devotional penance. And so he, became, he becomes very dear. Now, Brahma's penance, if we look at it, and not just also when we go into the third canto, we hear more about Brahma's penance and they're even more uh, amazing or austere. So I, you know, we, we can see ourselves. I think we ought, we ought to see ourselves in this, that, um, um, you know, we're, we're, we're also performing penance. We're also performing the penance, or austerity. It, everyone is. In human life, one does not avoid penance or austerity, right? Uh, that's human life. Um, animal life or plant life means it's like, it's time to eat, eat, time to drink, drink, time to have sex, and have, have sex. Human life means we forego some immediate gratification for what we believe will be longer term pleasure like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna work this job for five years yeah i'm gonna get up early go and I, I don't really like it it's not fulfilling but then i'll have enough money to get that house and take a vacation in europe and then i'll be fulfilled so everyone's doing penance to to master a musical instrument or a sport or to get a college degree or to be be a successful in business means like, yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to go to the bar every night. I'm not going to go to the beach every weekend. I'm going to, I'm going to work these 70 hour weeks and uh, like that. All right. So our opportunity is to follow Brahma and that the penance we do, that it's, it's tapo divyam. It's divine penance. Tapo divyam puchakiyena satvam shudhya dyasma brahma sakyam trinantam. Lord Rishabhadev speaks to his 100 sins. 100 sons headed by Bharat. And he describes human life is meant for penance, can't avoid it. And specifically intelligent human life, spiritual human life is meant for divine penance. Penance, austerity, tapo divyam, that moves one to realize the bliss within, the bliss that comes from devotional service, ever increasing, ever increasing spiritual happiness. Um, 
So when we direct our unavoidable propensity for austerity and penance towards serving Prabhupada, towards serving Krishna, to realizing higher values in life, then, then we become dear to Krishna. And, and that's how we can follow Brahma. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> um, I think penance is like voluntary activity, yeah. like yeah. doing penance, yeah. where like austerity might be like conditions that surround you, whether you're volunteering or not. Um, it can be it can be self volunteer um, austerities. I think penance might be more like. Um, Proactive. We're proactive. Okay. Thanks for that. Th th thanks for that distinction. I appreciate it. Yes. And uh, yeah, so we can see that your yeah, Brahma's penance are really severe, but we're because okay, like whatever. Like, okay, most of us, maybe all of us here, you know, let's say we were raised to uh to eat meat, to eat, you know, the flesh of dead dead animals. And now Look, we don't think, well, that's not a penance. Like it, it, it would be torture, you know, it would be torture to eat meat again. But just like, you know, like the idea is like, we were trained that that's, that's gratification, that's happiness, that's good food. And at some point we gave that up, all right? So we might not think that's penance, um, but like we're, we're giving things up that most of the world considers like, oh, how can you get, you, you, don't, you don't smoke, you don't drink. You, um, uh, like that and uh, okay so you know, as we often say other things we could be doing at 5 a.m at 8 30 a.m so here we are we're doing some penance or austerity whatever we want to call it and applying our mind and intelligence to hear krishna's words and srimad bhagavatam so this is whatever penance we're voluntarily doing it there's other things we, we could be doing on a monday morning so you know you know, assuming we have some drops of sincerity, we're becoming dear to Prabhupada through this penance. Thank you, Damianti. Hi, Krishna. I just have one more question related to Lord Brahma. Yeah. Um, in the purport, it says, <clears throat> um, Lord Brahma exactly followed these principles without any superiority complex, and thus he attained the highest perfectional stage. Of experiencing the abode of the Lord and the Lord Himself with all His paraphernalia. Um, so, in this particular case of our Lord Brahma, yeah. um, he was he in the position when when right before he created the material this material universe. Was he in the position of having like fallen from um, the Vaikuntha Loka planets, or um, and then he and then he rose up and attained the highest perfectional stage from a lower place. He 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 did penance and then he attained a higher perfection. Or was he like already totally a pure devotee? I guess that's my question. Okay, thanks for your question. Well, um, I uh, my, my understanding is like I, it, it wouldn't be it would not be proper to say that he was fallen. At the same time, uh, like now, well, it's it gets a little complex about Brahmas in general because as we discussed, there's Brahmas of other universes, and most of them have or all of them have more heads than our Brahma. The universes are bigger. But not all the Brahmas are pure devotees. Some of the Brahmas, they're all devotees, but some of them have devotion mixed with Gyan. Some of them have devotion mixed with Karma. So that's, that's a point. Um, um, so our Brahma is pure devotee. Uh, we know that. And then, now, but th there's, there's levels of pure devotional service. So my understanding about our Brahma, at least I wouldn't feel comfortable saying that he was fallen. Um, you know, be, before this pastime where he's experiencing Bhakunta and Vishnu face to face. Um, but that, that uh, you know, I, I see that he, would, he, he, he was pure 
and then and then there's there's like different depths of realization for the pure soul it's not like pure devotee that's it and like that's it the it's like there's there's infinite levels of increase and depth in gradations of pure devotion so he's a pure devotee and he um and he said to do my service i need to, I'm, I'm a little confused here i need to go into meditation and so now he's 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 deepening he's he's deepening and increasing and enhancing his devotion not that he was impure before at the same time he's he's coming to even deeper love in this whole process of austerity and seeing vishnu that's the way i see it thanks for the question gajendra prabhu Hi Krishna, good morning. Um, yeah, I I was just starting, you know, wanting to look more closely at the different meaning of some of these words, like like penance. And it was when you were saying something, and I don't remember exactly about, you know, maybe somebody makes a, you know, a choice to go to, to school instead of something else, you know, so they can get a better job when they're later. I don't remember exactly what it was, but, you know, you were just talking about that. And so I started, I started thinking about the word, you know, penance. And then I started, I started thinking about the word sacrifice in relation to it and trying to see what, what is penance and what is sacrifice how do they relate similarly and what would be you know what would they differently convey because it you know that they, they do seem similar yeah penance and sacrifice seem similar um almost like they could be used interchangeably and in the, in the example you gave you used the word penance um it, it, it was it was it was an interesting example like because that's where why the word i think sacrifice came to me like okay i'm sacrificing maybe doing something now for a dip for a result in the future i can see like if i make this sacrifice now there'll be some benefit benefit to my future it, so I, I saw well you know using the word penance not sacrifice and because there is that relationship um but again there does seem to be a difference between the two words i started looking at how the exercise of choice comes into this because penance also has a strong connection to the word austerity right but in, in austerity something can be austere and austerity but you may not have it may not be really chosen it may not be a real choice one by may just be uh put in thrust in a position circumstantially find themselves in a very austere situation but they never weren't ever making a deliberate conscious choice to be in that situation they you know they may be sometimes that's beneficial like there's examples of someone who um was not deliberate but followed the codice yeah and got great 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 benefit um but there wasn't a conscious choice there but so austerity can be there and there may even be benefit but it may not be a deliberate choice whereas i think of penance where somebody is making a deliberate choice to perform that austerity and so i was just um in no particular point i just you know i'm just somehow felt provoked to just really start looking at how these things are the same different related and how choice was coming into play and um just wanted to share that in case somebody else's mind works similarly thanks for that yeah, i mean i'm hearing what you're sharing with gajendra real consistent with what damianti shared as far as the 
possible distinction between penance and austerity uh, founded on the choice. And then you brought in sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you hear these words a lot, penance, sacrifice, austerity. So it's, a, it's an interesting study there. There are similarities and distinctions. Thank yeah, you. That's all. Thank you. Bhaktin Laura. Hi, good morning. Um, I might have a question. I'm not quite clear. I'm going to see. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So you said um, being steady in devotional service, and I'm experiencing like there's lots of different levels of that. And there's like devotional service as uh, from what I know so far in, in bhakti yoga, like chanting, reading, like all those other, I don't know all of them, but those ways to offer devotional service, um, offering my food. And, and then there's like um, devotional service, just like as, as relating to other human beings and in like just being in like a mood of humility. And what stood out to me is you said, yeah, you were, I said humility, more tolerant than a tree and offering like respect to others and demanding no respect for myself. And I think, yeah, what you're saying in that obviously is like without the attachment and that's, and that's I think a discussion we've had also like without being attached to that and still being able to stand in that place of humility and um, offering care, empathy, whatever that looks like. Um, and I'm thinking like, there's a couple of things like, I'm like, well, what happens, you know, like if I'm triggered and I also want to feel authentic and like what I'm able to give and also that sense of I'm experiencing lately myself feeling protective of myself sometimes and then there's like the extreme of like uh like with I don't want to be victimized or manipulated so like standing stand and like from the from a bhakti sense like how to stand in that if I'm not getting respect or something or 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 something feels unsafe or something and then still standing in that sense of humility and offering respect to them and my and my own self i guess like i want to know that like in bhakti yoga it's also saying like i might not demand respect for others but i get to respect myself i hope that's part of it I hope that's not like like a is that like a am i being needy by desiring like respecting my own self i think that's like that to me seems important um so yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess that question also comes from, cause I can see in those instances or like the, the fear that's there around those situations where I can either, yeah, like feel protective, maybe instead of assertiveness can go into um, aggressiveness or, or also give up of myself. So there's a couple of things there. Um, I don't know what you want to, how you will respond. Hey, thank you, Laura. Yeah, there, there's a few principles, interrelated principles there. Thank you. Yeah, like Arjuna on the battlefield, when he when he didn't want to fight, let the others have the kingdom, I'll go to the forest. He was being arrogant. And when he fought and killed millions, millions of soldiers, that was humility. Okay, because in a sense, humility means I know my position. And my position is as a servant of Krishna, I'm a servant of Prabhupada. And so in doing that service, sometimes it might look like tolerating in silence, but really tolerating, not building resentment. And sometimes knowing my position as a humble servant of Srila Prabhupada, sometimes that might look like fighting fiercely to protect what's dear. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so humility means to, to know our position and to surrender to it and anything else, even if we're saying humble words uh, like that, or self-effacing words, but if we're if we're not surrendering to our service in a lion-like way, then that's actually arrogance, the so-called humble words. And then another principle here is like, is yeah, to as you're saying, like to to know ourselves, to to meet ourselves where we're at, to meet ourselves where we're at. Okay, let's take the example of say food. Okay. So the idea 
of an advanced devotee is, yeah, that I, I consume as much prashadam as necessary to keep my body healthy. Kamasyan Andriya Pritir, Labo Jiveti, Yavana, Jivasya Tafa Jigasa, Nautiyas Jeha Karma Bhila, to keep body and soul together in a healthy way. Um, um, to, to not eat more than required, and like that. Okay, but then I, when, when, let's say if I look at myself, well, look, I, I enjoy eating. Okay, I'll eat prashad, but I, I enjoy eating and not the bare minimum to keep body and soul required. And if I, if I really, at my current level of advancement or lack of it, if I just always ate the bare minimum to keep body and soul together, I'd be thinking about food a lot. Okay, so let me meet myself where I'm at. And that means sometimes, maybe often, yeah, eating, eating more than my body absolutely needs. Because like, I'm not on that level of the six Goswami, so I don't want to pretend that I am. And as I practice, I'll become more naturally austere like that. So let's just replace food with respect or appreciation. So on that high devotional platform, which we want to aspire for, but not imitate on that high devotional platform, then, um, then yeah, there's no, there's no like ego need for respect or appreciation or adoration like that. And in the course, in the course of do, doing devotional service, sometimes respect and appreciation and admiration comes. So I, I, I don't reject it. Okay, I accept it without letting it form a superiority complex. And in the course of doing, doing devotional service, sometimes dishonor and insult will come. And I don't let that disturb me on, on the high, on high consciousness platform. I, can, I, I hear it, say, okay, maybe there's something here that can help me to, be, to refine my character. And I continue steadily in devotional service. Um, so that's what it means to not be attached to respect. But similarly, so let's say respect or appreciation. It's like, okay, well, I'm not on that platform. Just like I'm not on the platform to eat only the bare minimum that body needs to be healthy. Okay, yeah, like, like here, I did this, I did that. I, 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 I offered myself, I sacrificed myself that way. I want some appreciation. Yeah, just like, yeah. I want another Golubjamin, even though I don't need it. But so, and, and if I'm imitating like the six Goswamis or Srila Prabhupada, a level where there's, there's no ego need for appreciation or reciprocation. Um, if I'm imitating that, then just like in the analogy, I'll be thinking of food all day. Then in the analogy, then if, if I'm imitating, yes, I'm, I'm like those devotees who need, no respect for themselves or they're not seeking that. If I'm imitating that, then I'd probably be walking around with resentment. I did so much and he didn't even appreciate me and she's getting appreciated, but I did more. So then sometimes, sometimes meeting myself where I'm at, I might want to acknowledge at least to myself, maybe communicate, I'd like some recognition here for what I did. Maybe that shows I'm not, you know, so spiritually pure or whatever. So yeah, me meeting ourselves where we're at, where we're at, and and aspiring, aspiring in an organic, grounded way towards more and more pure consciousness, more and more pure uh, pure consciousness, along with the principle that yeah, demanding no respect for myself and humility, um, yeah, that. Uh, yeah, the, the Vaishnava humility often looks like ready to, ready to be fierce to protect what's dear. I'll mention there's one lecture, probably gives a lecture on the teachings of Pallad Maharaj and Prabhupada, uh, he's talking about, he says, it's natural to love oneself. Right? So that, that's different than like an arrogant, egotistical self-absorption. But he said, but we, we are spirit soul. We're parts and parcels of Krishna. Krishna is the most dearly beloved and we're, we're his children. So it's natural to want to love oneself. That's different than getting absorbed in an ego way in myself and being so taken by myself that I, be, that I become distracted from humbly serving.
Thank you. I'm appreciating the response and giving me some nice insights. And yeah, it's like um, I heard I've heard it over and over, and and but it's important the essence. Yeah, meeting myself where I'm at, and and when I'm willing to do that, then then I can clearly see like um ways that I can yeah, be assertive or opportunities to be assertive by caring for myself or asking for what I need. And so it doesn't build up resentment. And, and there's like a humbleness in that. Cause it's like, if we're humbly meeting ourselves where our, where we're at, we're, yeah, there's like a humble authenticity in that, even though it might not be where I want to be, or, yeah. you know, maybe I see beyond that, what like, what would be even better was, yeah, I could, if I was able to be that way, but that's not where I'm at, but I can still like strive for that and it seems like in the process of bhakti yoga that's what it is like it's like there's like um i almost can sense like there's an austerity or penis i don't know the words difference but like in that because in the humble meeting myself like there's an opportunity to just like purify that even yeah yeah and uh, we'll, we'll we'll never get purified if i'm ignoring where i'm at we, we use this term, the pre-trans fallacy um, or, or confusing ignorance with transcendence. So I think, no, I'm, I'm transcendental to needs for respect and appreciation and lots of food. I'm transcendental. Well, I'm not transcendental. I'm actually ignoring that actually I had this burning need for to be appreciated for something I did. I wouldn't be recognized. And so if I'm so ignorance is not a strong foundation for progressing in spiritual life and meeting ourselves where we're at that itself is conscious it's it's sattvic and uh and that's 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 the door that's the doorway to move towards transcendence thank you thank you laura and i'll just share that you and probably others here have heard me share this this uh back to godhead article from Srila Prabhupada, 1944 and and he's he's he talks there he says the the vaishnav approach he compares it to the theosophy approach he describes the theosophist the, the theosophist he was analyzing madame blavatsky's theos theosophy philosophy the theosophy they um and he quotes a the theosophy book or something that yes we we will not rest peacefully at night as long as the the weak are oppressed by the strong and like that. And Prabhupada says, that's a nice sentiment. Our Vaishnava approach is different. Our Vaishnava approach is to make everyone so strong that they won't be oppressed. Make everyone so strong that they won't be oppressed. And so, I mean, so internally self-satisfied that I'm not needy. I'm not needy for my sense of value or my sense of being lovable or my sense of being powerful or that I'm not needy for others to um, um, recognize me, appreciate me like that. And um, uh, because, you know, to the extent that we are needy for that external validation, we are setting ourselves up to be exploited. All of that in the context of what we're discussing that like, well, I am needy for more food. I am needy for at least this level of appreciation and recognition to, to start where we're at and not, not pretend we're somewhere we're not. Otherwise, we'll never get purified. Thank you, Laura. Hare Krishna, thank you all for your association. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Jai. Thank you. Thank you.